So that was really a rapid fire of information from from Alexander, and um, what what our two talks now now it's working, but let me le <laughs> let me stay here for a moment. Um, so what our two talks have in common a little bit is that we don't talk so much, we don't talk at all about technical implementations, and the maybe some questions that you just asked Alexander are not part in the talk, even though there might be in, in your head every day, it's more about a certain kind of mindset that you should have, right? So when Alexander said, okay, these are the certain, uh, certain things that you should consider, that you should not uh, jump on uh, shortcuts, for example, uh, that's something that's very, very, very valuable. Why? Because it determines how you work every day. And that's why I did not choose a topic where I talked about the, the latest trend in SEO, but overall, okay, what kind of situations do you create in your own organization. So what happens if you work on your own, then things are easy. If you work with a second person, maybe work, maybe also relations, things can get complicated and you expect certain uh, certain behavior, it doesn't come into place and all of these things uh, influence your work and also then your, your SEO performance. And that's why uh, even though some print might be a little bit small, but I will explain everything. I didn't expect to go right back to Prenzlauer Berg with this room. So if there's anything that you uh, that you cannot understand, I will try to repeat everything. And of course, later on when we have questions, I can come back to the slides. So that's why I, I thought about when, when speaking to the family, what kind of topic could be in interesting was a little bit about experience from Rocket and, and, and other companies about working together with teams and their questions and maybe how they work with data. And that's why um, I thought it would be a good idea to think about uh, what's stopping you in SEO. It's oftentimes not Google, even though Google will always be the topic. It's about more about how do you organize, how do you, the term was al already mentioned by Alexander, how do you execute, which is very, very important. So, yeah, that's me. I'm Stefan. I'm with Rocket since 2010, and uh, since 2012 I'm heading SEO, and now VP Marketing and uh, also SEO Consultant. I had the pleasure... Uh, um, being part of the whole internationalization, so uh, seeing ventures go in Southeast Asia, in Africa, in South America, uh, but also also in Europe and working together with a lot of different teams and um, building platforms with them, uh, speaking, uh, building up processes with the teams, and that's something that I uh, enjoy a lot. I know this is small, but that's just a, uh, uh, what I'm going to speak about. One is uh, just briefly about data interpretation. Alexander already mentioned a few tools. Those tools are great, don't get me wrong, but they might sometimes lead you to jump on conclusions. And uh, visibility was mentioned by Alexander, for example. Then one topic would be ownership and workflow. Uh, to give you an example about, okay, um, if something happens in a situation, what can, be, um, what can hinder the organization in acting fast or really understanding uh, what is happening? So we're going to have a, sm a small case in here. So uh, first off, jumping straight into a topic, it's about uh, how you work with data. So who of you is using similar web? Again, p uh, standard disclaimer, I like all of these tools, right? I don't say don't use them. It's, it's about understanding maybe what kind of data is being, is being uh, offered to you. So again, maybe raise your hands who's using similar web. Right, you can turn around, then you see, then you see a few hands uh, out there. So, similar web is like a dream come true for people who like to understand or have the um, have the expectation of understanding everything by just handing in a domain name. So, SEO can can lead to um, collecting a lot of proxies, a lot of data, because there's not just this one number that everybody would like to have to un in order to understand whether a website is, is good or bad. So that's why tools like SimilarWeb, and we're going to show two others that are being used regularly, are being, um, uh, well, are, are being used in order to understand how well uh, a company is, is doing. SimilarWeb is great, you just put in a domain name and then you can get all of the data, kind of all of the data. So you only get the data that they are actually, uh, that they can actually use. So very soft for this smaller, didn't it's much, much bigger than my TV, but it might not be uh, uh, the biggest for the room. So what we see are the different marketing channels. So if you look for a domain, uh, similar web will split up the, um, how the traffic is being shared between different marketing channels. And on the left, you, you see direct traffic. And over here, we see organic search and uh, similar web for a domain name that I will not display will say that 50% of the traffic comes via SEO. So what happens sometimes is that a founder or somebody else who's close to your company sees this data and says, okay, this company is doing great SEO because here, have a look, come, come here, come here, see, 50% SEO. So they must be great, they must be doing great work in there. So please take a look at what they're doing, copy that, you're going to be a, a big star out there. And um, 
this can cause a lot of work within a company because then somebody, the person who is responsible for SEO has to take a look at this data and explain to the founder, to the CEO, maybe to the CMO why this might not be uh, a, good, um, a good idea of, of doing this. And so um, to spare you the details, if you see a, um, a, a, um, well, a situation like this, then oftentimes it's more about that this company is not doing uh, a lot of other performance marketing. There, it might be more an offline um, company that has a lot of uh, brand visits. People already go to this go to this website, which is great, and they also type in the name into Google. So that's why they have a lot of navigational search, as it's called. So people would like to go directly to this page. But the first instance would be either this. A company is doing great SEO, or in this uh, business that I would like to tap into, SEO is a is a relevant channel, and that's why I would like to invest in there and go forward. But this might not help you there. Um, and another tool, sorry that visibility is mentioned in here so often. So who's using Zistrix, for example? Well, I expected a, a few a few more. So uh, situation here again, I put in a domain name, then I get uh, a visibility, which means that. Systrix will uh, collect data concerning the rankings to uh, different keywords and will create a score out of this. And here we see a comparison between a blue and a red domain. If I put in the same data into such metrics, the blue stays blue, the uh, red turns orange, we see that there's actually not uh, the first red domain so superior to the other one. Why? Because they, they use a different uh, tool set, uh, sorry, keyword set. So depending on uh, which company you work in, if you would like to impress your, your boss, you're going to going to choose a tool. Does this help me now in understanding if um, if the keywords are the right one for me? Um, one question was, how can you fake a visibility uh, if you rank for a totally random keyword that a lot of people look for? For, for example, suddenly a lot of people, uh, you will rank for the term sign up for whatever reason on position 90. Then you will get a huge increase in terms of visibility because a lot of people look for sign up, for example. I don't know why. So suddenly you see spikes going up, um, but this might have nothing to do with your with your company, with your business model. It's just that this tool finds you at this position, and then you say, "Hey, it's this domain, so the visibility should go up." So what I'm pointing at here is tools that do not work with your data, based on your data, and they just give random or um, high-level numbers, and they can actually hinder your work in understanding if um, if a business is the right one for you or whether the the um, the optimization that they're doing, whether it's the right one for you. And if you thought the, the print can get even cannot get even smaller, it can. Um, <laughs> as, as the last one, it's, um, it's Google Trends. Um, so Google Trends, again, same situation, put in a term, a search term, and then you see a trend. Uh, so as the name says, it's a trend, it's not search volume. So if we have uh, two terms in there, then we might think, okay, they are more or less on, on par. But uh, as mentioned, it's not search volume, it, it's a trend. And if we put in the data into the keyword planner, then we see that there's actually a big difference in terms of demand for these terms. And that's uh, something, um, I think this is also going to be recorded, so you will see uh, the sources in there. In an article which was published uh, two, three years ago uh, by um, Tom Alvi explains very well how this data comes about. So in case you're working daily with Google Trends, please try to understand where this data comes from and how to use it. So it will tell you if something is trending compared to other searches during this time. So if you change the time frame, also the, uh, the graph is going to change in there. So what's actually the best? The best is to do these pixelated things, is to build your own data. So if you try to understand whether SEO is the right channel for you, if you actually would like to wait for one year until you find out whether traffic comes to your website and then to see it's the right traffic or not, you need to invest into, uh, into Google AdWords, into paid marketing, into search engine marketing. Why? Because that's something where you can instantly find out whether there's demand for what you're doing there and whether you are the right product. If you start off thinking about should I get an Sorry for that, an expired domain, should I do other things because I think it will help my SEO. You first need to understand whether the channel is actually the right one for you, right in the terms of demand, and whether you actually cater the needs in there. So that's why make sure that if you're the SEO or you know the SEO, that he or she has access to Google AdWords of your company, of the, to the MCC, and that they understand how this data comes about you. That's very, very valuable. It's much more valuable than all the other tools that I showed before or any other tool that you know. It's about your company buying people 
or paying Google to bring your people to your website in order to behave in a certain way. And that's something that you would like to trigger in, uh, in the end with, with SEO. And you don't have to wait for so long. Please buy this traffic and work with that. And then see whether niches that have been mentioned are the right ones for you. Right? Maybe, maybe the, the niche, there's niches in the internet are very big. There's a high demand, but they are not buying or, or selling your product. And um, what, what still happens is that um, even though there might be many goals on a website, um, your traffic in, in, in all channels are just being judged by the last click performance. So if you use Google Analytics, so let's try the hand raising thing again. Who's using Google Analytics? Well, yeah, everybody. So I'm pretty sure you, um, you have also the issue with last click attribution, meaning uh, the last touch point that a customer had um, is, going to be, is going to be the winner. Then the conversion is going to be attributed to this position. But, um, and so people will see, the tw uh, question was asked, how good should the um, conversion rate be of for SEO and, and compared, to, compared to other channels? It's very, very hard if you just speak about conversions because there are many different goals that you should set up on your website. Why? Because there are, there are going to be many, many touch points by different channels. Right. So if you come to a website, this can be via, um, as you see here. So this means uh, the, the channel grouping fast. So sometimes people come five times directly. They come via organic search, then four times direct, via email, and then direct. So there are many touch points that you can create out there in order uh, for people to show up to your website. And on top, oops. And on top, um, you should create for all those instances also different goals on your site, meaning maybe in the first time people don't convert, but maybe we have a sign up or maybe they go deeper within your product. And all of this information is a goal in itself. So even though the uh, customer or the visitor might not convert via the traffic that you generate, they might take the first step into the right direction. And this is how you optimize all other uh, paid performance channels. If you do uh, Facebook, for example, then you try to understand okay, are there micro conversions in there. And these things need to be set up in order to understand how valuable the traffic is. So going away from just Okay, is, is a, does a website really have organic traffic? Does it have visibility? It doesn't tell me anything about um, um, are these actually my keywords, and how do people respond when they come to my when they come to my website? And this is something which has not much to do with how you do SEO. It's more about what kind of expectation do you have, and what kind of uh, how you try to understand what your what your market is about. Right. Um, but a typical question that an SEO will, will, uh, will come across is, uh, why did my organic traffic, and if you ask Google, then it will say a sudden drop or a website traffic drop, how, why did my traffic change? Right, so every day, all, nearly all hands were raised in here. So every, every day you take, uh, take a look at numbers in Google Analytics. You try, to under, you try to make sense of the world with the data that this tool provides. And it, it's a big part of your life if you do this all day long. Right? So suddenly a number changes in there and <gasps> What happened? And then the people rush off to the SEO and they think that something bad happened here, right? Or a traffic drop. And then the SEO answer will come if they are being asked what happened. It, it, it all depends. But what usually happens is that SEOs will run off and try to read the whole internet on what has happened. Because if you ask if somebody saw something, then somebody saw something too. And then there are two and three. And then, then suddenly somebody will create a blog post out of this. So nearly, I just make a bold statement, nearly everybody, nearly all articles out there on SEO, they are very much about what's happening at Google and how you should do technical changes on your website. But they don't tell you, okay, how do you, which information should be there uh, within your company? What should the other person know uh, in, your com in your company? How can you uh, transfer knowledge? So... The first thing that you need to do in order to avoid uh, the rabbit hole um, and <laughs> the, the rabbit hole of uh, SEO change rumors, right? Just spending your day there on the desktop and trying to understand what's happening out there is to write down who's actually influencing your performance. So who are all the players that influence the numbers that suddenly the four turns into five in Google Analytics? And uh, you're concerned about the future of your of your company so write down who's actually influencing your your um, your performance so first off it's of course you and that's great because that's the fastest thing that you can change you cannot change google technical implementation uh, take take a lot of a lot of time so things that you can change on your own very fast is very valuable then the user Right, something that we also might not hear so much about. Competitors, or overall, the whole internet, search engines, and uh, data providers. So if you take a look at different tools, they're going to give you different data, and then suddenly uh, you're going to behave uh, based on, on the triggers that they're triggering. And that's why uh, at Rocket, we try to build workflows for these kinds of questions. 
this is actually really pixelated because I'm not allowed to share this kind of information. But if you have a situation that something suddenly changes, then everybody will rush off trying to make the best out of, uh, try to do the best in, in order to understand the situation. And that's why we say, okay, there are actually steps that you can do. Experienced SEOs are a little bit like, uh, uh, like an engineer, they already think they already know um, into which direction uh, to look at, but um, it makes sense to really have a checklist for this topic. And that's why I talked about uh, Google Analytics. What I see in nearly any of nearly all Google Analytics accounts that I look into is uh, graphs like this, without any context. Right. So I'm asking a lot of questions about uh, whether uh, you use something or not. Who is using Google Analytics annotations? Who puts in their own information there? The first row. That's why you sit in the first row. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> right. But nearly everybody works with that, but hardly anybody puts data in there. So it means that people look into Google Analytics and you got no idea what happened. So if you get the question, what happened? So, I don't know. Do you know what happened? What happened here in January 2016? Nobody will tell you. And imagine you have a company of 50 people and all look into this data. There's, there's a lot of knowledge being lost. Right. So if something happens, then most, very often, it's, uh, it's tracking. That's the first thing that you cannot read here. So if something changes, go over to the person responsible for tracking and ask them, did you change anything? Do you know something that we should know? And oftentimes, this is the case. Maybe there was a bug. Maybe there was an update. Session time, uh, longer, shorter. And then there's nothing SEO related. But this kind of information needs to be shared with everybody in the company that is influenced by this. And this also means for, for your SEO work. So as soon as you do something, you have a change, you must inform your company. And this is the worst thing, right? Because it burns so much time. You try to understand what happened in the past. You need to write down, there's a function in analytics called Google Analytics Annotations. It's also available in AdWords. I guess nobody's using that out there. So why did traffic go up? Did we maybe have a campaign in there? Uh, did we spend, uh, did we have a TV ad? Maybe there was seasonality and then all other kind of things. This is something that you need to do from day one because you're going to lose a lot of time. Especially if you're on holiday, you don't want to be called up and asked what happened in December 2015. Uh, it's better, better, better write it down. So make sure, first thing is always to check your tracking. If you work with numbers in Google Analytics, understand if, if a change has happened there. And if everything is A-OK, -okay, then uh, think about um, the other group that's influencing your work, it's the user. So does the user behave differently? You behave differently, that's at least what you would expect, right? You don't do the same things every day, right? You do, uh, you, you do changes, and the same also for the visitors of your website. You cannot expect them to behave uh, the, the, um, the same every day, every month. But there's, of course, um, seasonality in there. So instead of just looking at organic traffic, you would look at all, you would, for example, take a look at direct traffic do less people uh, come directly to your website. If that's the case, then it can be also okay. It's not good that you have less people on your website, but there's not much that you can do about this as an SEO. Right? And the same also for, for AdWords. Did the AdWords traffic also go down without, uh, without a change in budget? can also be that there's just less demand out there. And that's why the organic traffic is also decreasing in there. Um, if it's not tracking, if it's not, the, um, if it's not the user, then you try to understand okay, what is actually affected on your site. It can be that people then jump off and try to understand whether a certain keyword has changed, but I uh, always recommend to create certain clusters, certain groups. The um, easiest thing is, of course, to create certain kind of uh, landing page clusters. So if, you're e if you have e-commerce, you would have product pages, you have uh, category pages, brand pages, and, and cluster them in Google Analytics via advanced segments, uh, segments, for example, so that you can easily see whether one kind of these clusters has been affected. And you can do this automatically. Um, um, you can create dashboards in, in, in Google Data Studio, for example. You can uh, pull this data into Google Spreadsheets. And in Spreadsheets, you can actually send alerts. You can say, if a number changes, send me an email. And that's something that you can do in Google Analytics as well. If data changes there, if you say that per performance is 10% better or worse than the week before, get an, get an alert. Um, and then in Google Analytics, they will tell you exactly which pages are concerned. So this is something that you could set up uh, on your own very fast. And that's something that you should do from, from day one as well. If you cannot find out what's happening there, then you leave Google Analytics. Before you try to understand everything without within Google Analytics, you don't run, away or run around through different tools, but then you leave and then you check, check your website with a typical um, SEO uh, checks that you can do. You can also automate this by, with tools like uh, Testomato that run regular uh, checks for your, for your website, right? And then, if you still don't find it yet, then you try to find out did something uh, change drastically within the search engine result page. Right? That would be the next step. Otherwise, you can Google all day long. It will take a lot of time. That's why you try to 
have this later on. Right? And then you would still not uh, um, still not sure what happened, then you would take a look at, at SEO tools. So what I'm saying is have a dedicated process. Try to understand what your company has done before, have a structure for this, and most of the time it's not Google where your data is changing. It's because of many other things that are also much easier to, to, to change instead of Google. Right? So please always build your own data, invest into AdWords in, in order to understand whether um, organic traffic is valuable, Right, and that's something that you, you should do before buying a lot of SEO tools and trying to get an understanding of what's out there. Uh, Alexander mentioned don't follow new SEO KPIs of the industry. So every few months there's a new KPI and things are being compared and say, okay, you, sh you should work on these topics. Uh, maybe just a um, quick de detour a year ago or two years ago uh, on every SEO conference, people say you need to work on CTR because CTR influences your uh, your rankings and that you always worked on CTR, right? CTR means that's your market share, right? You would like to get pe that people come to your website. If you're not working on that, then you do a mistake right from the beginning. So it doesn't matter whether it influences your ranking. If it does, it's great, right? But that's not why you're inf that's why that's not why you're working on your CTR. But still, whole conferences are, are about this topic and a lot of articles too, right? So stay away from these things and focus on your work. Inform departments. Uh, if you're working in a company, make sure that the information is available and if things change that all um, the people that are influenced get information about this. Automate as much as possible and in the end execute on based on that and go forward step by step. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you.